Hello and welcome to Brandon Smith of Rugby and welcome to my preview of the Ospreys who host the Dragons this Saturday night in the, the Pro 14. It's a Welsh derby and this is my preview of the games. We're going to take a look at the team selections, we're going to look at stats, we're going to look at form and we're going to come up with a conclusion on who's going to win this match. As always, if you're new here, do hit that subscribe button down below. It's free to do and keeps you up to date with everything that goes on with the channel. It certainly is a busy time of year for the channel, so do keep up to date with everything. And as always, get your predictions down in the comments down below, and I'll be interacting with all your comments, and I reply to every comment. So make sure to get your comments down below. Before we look forward to this game, let's take a quick look back. The last time these two teams faced each other was back in January of this year, as Ospreys won this one 28 points to 20 down at Rodney Parade. Tries for Matt Prothero, George North and Scott Otten were enough for the Ospreys to get the win that day. Coming into this one, the Ospreys currently sit third in Conference A. And having lost last week against Ulster way in Belfast, they'll look to bounce back. The story is very different for the Dragons, though. They currently sit bottom of conference, say no win in eight, no win in 2021, and a really disappointing result against Zebra out in Palmer last weekend. They'll certainly want to push on from that defeat, having lost that one 15 points to 26. This game will take place down at Brewery Field, the home of Bridge End, due to the fact that Swansea are going to be playing football in the Championship down at the Liberty Stadium. Big boost for both teams are the return of a player each from the Wales squad, which has been released. So, Owen Watkin returns for the Ospreys. He fits onto the bench. We'll take a look at both sides in just a second. And Aaron Wainwright returns for the Dragons, going straight to the starting 15, starting at 8. Talking about both teams, let's take a look at the team selection that both coaches have picked. Toby Booth has picked this team to take on the Dragons. Let's go from the fullback through to the forward. So starting out fullback, we have Dan Evans and we have Keelan Giles and Hanno Dirksen on the wing. Keelan Giles, in fact, will win his 50th appearance for the region. Thomas Wheeler and Kieran Williams starts in the centre. Kieran Williams has been brilliant this season and is a really exciting prospect. Of course, the ever-consistent and Always there, aren't they? Uh, Reese Webb and Stephen Myler are the halfback pairs, and we'll get on to Stephen Myler in just a second. Then, uh, looking at the front row, we have Nicky Smith, Sam Pavi, and Bota in the front row with Ashley and Davis in the locks. And then the back row is Griffiths, Morris, and Ollie Cracknell, leaving a bench in the Phillips. Another Phillips, Fia, Evans, Cross, Ruben Morgan Williams, Owen Watkin, of course, and Cross. If we then head over to their opponents, it is the Dragons, of course. Let's take a look at who Dean Ryan has picked for this game. So starting once again with the fullback, we have Josh Lewis on the wing. We have Jonah Holmes, who got two tries last weekend. Ashton Hewitt is on the other wing. He'll win his 100th appearance for the region. And he's spoken so well about racism in the game and the importance of eradicating it. In the centre then, we have Jamie Roberts and Anaerin Owen. Then at fly half and scrum half, we have Gareth Davis and Bagshano, the scrum half who's recently signed for them. Going then to the front row, we have Brock Harris and Ellis Ship alongside Lloyd Fairbrother in the front row. Joe Davis and Joe Maximu are the locks with Ross Moriarty, Harrison Keddy captaining the side at seven and then Aaron Wainwright completing the team. So that's how both coaches have decided to pick the team. As always, let me know your thoughts on the picks of the coaches down below. Let's have a look at the key battles in this game. And I think the key battle really in this game is going to be at 10. Two 10s who play very contrasting styles and the stats certainly back that up and we'll have a look at them in just a second. First of all, let's look at the home team's number 10. It is Stephen Myler. He signed on a free contract, of course, after his contract came to an end at London Irish last summer. And he's been brilliant for the Ospreys. He's been so consistent. He's dictated games. He's done the simple things very well. And so well, in fact, that he has actually extended his contract a further year with the region. He currently sits third in the table for the most amount of points in the, the competition behind Jack Harty and John Cooney. So let's take a second to look at Stephen Myler's stats from this season. So, so far, he's played 10 games, starting 10 and total of 84 points. In attack, though, it's very interesting, the contrasting styles between him and his opposite man, that is Sam Davis. But in attack, zero tries, zero try assists, zero clean breaks, only the 45 metres gained, one offload and 19 carries. Isn't really that impressive at all. But if you have a look at his kicking stats, it's where he really stands out this season. He's, as I said, 84 points, kicking success of 85%. 
Penalty scored versus penalty missed. So he scored at 18, only missed the one this season, which is an incredible start. And with his conversions and uh, having 15 scored and then only missing five as well. And then five are more than likely going to be out far on the win when a try is scored in the corner. His opposite man in this game, of course, is Sam Davis, as we've already seen both teams. Let's have a look at his stats in this game. Attacking-wise, he actually looks very, very good. For a team that is bottom of conference, eh, he's been playing really well if you look at his stats. So he scored one try this season, one try assist, one clean break, eight offloads, one try assist, 155 metres gained and 63 carries. But then it's in the kicking department that he has been struggling in this season. So very opposites to Myler. Both players will bring something very different to the game. Kicking stats then for Sam Davis look like this. 68% kicking success rate. Penalty scored, missed on 17 to 3. Then conversion scored then slash missed on 9 scored and 12 missed, which is not the greatest stat at all. But you'd expect Myler to look to control the game a lot more. You won't expect much running rugby from him. But what he knows what to do in the right areas, that's what he stands out at, isn't it? He knows what to do, when to do it and how to do it. He's ex so experienced, having played for Northampton for many years, having been capped by England a couple of times and also played with London Irish and previously before all that, of course, has played rugby league. Sam Davis, of course, is an ex-Osprey, so he'll be looking to prove a point, having moved to the region a couple of years ago and also... You might be thinking about the Wales squad. It seems unlikely right now for him, but these derbies are really good opportunities for players to really stand up and be counted. Other interesting battles I'm really keen to see are Kieran Williams against Jamie Roberts. Both centres have probably been the form players of both teams over the course of this season. The battle of the scrum halves, of course, Reese Webb and the Argentinian scrum half will do battle. Reese Webb, of course, got the winning try for the Ospreys in that victory over Zebra when they won 10 points to zero a couple of weeks ago. And Dean Ryan has spoken openly and honestly about the fact that they are playing some decent rugby, but they just can't finish their chances and they're just not getting the results. And at the end of the day, rugby is all about results. It felt like at the start of the season, they were really pushing on and cracking on and would maybe even potentially push for those playoffs. But it's just not going to happen this season at all, is it? For the Ospreys, this may be the last chance to really push for them places at the top of the table. Again, we have a massive clash, don't we, in this uh, conference. We have the Irish derbies this weekend, which will be a massive talking point and a massive impact on this result and how the Ospreys will look to move forward. So what are my predictions for this one? Well, I've got about the Ospreys at the end of the day. I am an Ospreys fan, but I just think Ospreys are that bit better than the Dragons at the minute. The likes of Matt Prudro once again has had a brilliant season. And Stephen Myler and Reese have the control of the game. The way they'll be able to dictate this game, I just think they've got a bit more over the halfback pairing of the Dragons. But I'd be really keen to hear what you've got to say on this one. It's going to be a fascinating match. I am, in fact, doing a watch along, a Pro 14 special watch along on Saturday night, going live about quarter past seven. So we'll keep an eye on this game. We'll keep an eye on Leinster and Ulster, which is kicking off as well at the same time. So do join me there. There'll be a link down below. Click on that reminder. And as well, always do subscribe here if you haven't done so already. Anyway, that's my preview. I will see you later tonight if you want to join me for the Munster against Connacht Watch Along. Again, quarter past seven, kickoff at 25 to 8 for that one. But that's all I've got to say on this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Try to keep going. I know it's difficult out there, um, but we have rugby to look forward to and possibly even a Grand Slam for Wales. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. And peace.